Modern Science, Part 1b, The Carillion Aura. Using a device called a Carillion Photography Machine, we can photograph the aura. The device uses a flat metal plate with a camera underneath it. When an object is placed on the plate and a low level of electrical current is run through the metal, a photograph taken through the metal plate of the underside of the object placed on top of it will also show the small electrical charge casting bolts across field lines as the current in the metal plate is transducted into the object set on top of it. Some would contest that, because it is being amplified by the charged plate, the energy captured in the photograph is not native to the object being depicted. However, the introduction of electricity into an object will still react in only one of two ways. One way, sparks, for a living object, and another, glows, for an inanimate object. Also, the color scale established between them, with blue sparks depicting for a living object, and a red glow emanating evenly for a dead or inanimate object, is unique to Carillion photos. Long exposure Carillion photographs, such as this one of an apple, can show the amount of life an object has in it, as the high end of the blue end of the lifeline color spectrum of Carillion photos fades to a bright white light the longer the exposure time. Long exposures of living objects can, however, be confused for high amplitude short exposure photos of non-living objects because in both there is a high voltage of white light depicted. However, as we see in this curly in photo of a half an apple, a long exposure of a living object shows the white shifting of the blue sparks, while the white light in any duration of exposure time of a dead object will only depict the amplitude of the electrical current being passed through it. The aura of living objects depicted in curly in photos is a combination of the current being passed through the metal plate and the natural electrical charge of the living object. The result, as we see here in this depiction of a pair of human hands, shows up in Curlian photos as a halo of blue sparks formed between the living object and the metal plate. Where the hands are pressed against the plate, these blue sparks appear to form halos or an aura the light of which actually illuminates the rest of the hands, which are not touching the metal plate, but which are still visible in this photo. The white light of these blue sparks distinguishes a living object from the darkness or red glow of an inanimate object. The dark red glow of a dead object should not be confused with the pale light of the blue sparks that can reflect from the surface of the metal plate to illuminate the rest of the living object in a Carillion photograph. As the medium length, medium amplitude depiction of a leaf on the left shows, the life force is leaving the dying leaf, the edges are surrounded by a halo of blue sparks, while the interior of the leaves has begun to shift toward a dark red glow. In the Carillion photo of a metal key on the right, we see it emits no light from within it, and instead is just a shadow profiled by the purple glowing white sparks of the electricity sent through it by the metal plate. In these low amplitude long exposure Carillion photos of a key, a leaf, a starfish, and a coin, we see the different forms of aura or energy field each emits. The key glows a dark red, the living leaf is silhouetted by a dark blue halo. The starfish's spines emit the same effect as the leaf, a halo of blue sparks, while the coin emits a pale red glow uniformly from its flat surface. Because in Curlian photos, both living and non-living objects appear to emit an electrical aura indicative of what has been implied as a soul, it is important to understand the distinct differences in traits of these auras to be able to, by looking at a Carillion photo of any object, determine if the object was alive or dead when the photo was taken. 
As mentioned before, a low amp long exposure of the sole of a living object can appear similar to the high amp short exposure of the sole of a dead object. Consider this high amp short exposure Carilion photo of a Celtic cross. As one runs a high voltage of electrical current through an inanimate object, it does appear to take on the same essential characteristic traits as exhibited by a low voltage applied over a longer duration to a living object. Their similarities are only illusory, however, in light of the fact that metal, despite magnetic shadowing, does not retain enough semblance of an electrical charge after the current applied to it is removed for it to be considered an animate self-electrifying object. It is this self-electrification, defining living as opposed to inanimate objects, that is shown in Corellian photos. Second form of photography, making use of the same essential method of technology as the Corellian metal plate designs, but measuring only the electrical transduction between five small metal circles and the tips of a person's fingers, shows us more minute differences in the aggregate charge of sparks exchanged between the fingertips and the charged metal as differences along the seven color spectrum reflecting, essentially, our mood at the time of the photo. We see here the simulated colors of her fingertips amplified charges shown projected onto an image of the person taking the picture, thus effectively depicting the aura of the person. The usual interpretation of the seven chakras attribution to the seven color spectrum applies in the interpretation of the colors simulated in these photos. If the electrical charge emitted from the body is strongly positive, the aura appears blue. If the electrical charge emitted from the body is strongly negative, the aura appears red. If the mood of the person is neither sad nor angry, their energy is neutral and appears green. In this form of depiction, our aura can appear as only one color, or as many different colors. The placement of colors in the different areas of our auras depicts the difference in electrical transduction between our different fingertips. There are, thus, five areas of the aura, each area of which can be one of seven colors. When these five areas are all the same color, it signifies the alignment of the chakras, or that there is harmony of the same mood throughout the whole organism. When these five areas are not all one color, but each one different, it signifies the disalignment of the chakras, such that a being is restless or dissatisfied, or that their feelings at the time of the photo were mixed. 